Good morning, dolls. Welcome to Little Gretchen's Workshop. So today I'm going to show you how to make some little wooden spoons. Okay, I'm also going to show you how to make a spatula, but let's start with the spoons. So what I do, I take a piece of basswood, scrap piece, nothing in particular, and I draw out the basic shape to the spoon. Now, I like to cut it out a little bit bigger than what it'll actually be, so I have plenty of room to sand and shape. Don't worry if you make it slightly crooked, it, you'll be able to shape it up. But if you would prefer, measure it out, make the lines perfect, but you have to be super careful when you're cutting anyway. So I never try to cut the complete circle of the spoon portion out. You want to cut it a little bit at a time. And this is how I do. I start with the little corners. You're going to take the corner off and you're going to have to do more than one pass. Now I have a very sharp blade, um, very sharp. That's a Swan Morton blade that I'm using. Um, you're going to have to go over it a couple times just because you can't just cut straight through. Um, basswood is pretty hard. It cuts easily, but you're going to have to go through a couple passes. Now you're going to start right around the neck and you're always going to cut against the grain when you're, um, when you're cutting this part. So you're going to go straight across right there near the neck. Be very careful. Take your time. Take your time. Okay. And then you're going to come up to the top. Come across. Now, it's going to look really rough for a minute. Like I said, sometimes these projects look a little pre-K. But trust the process. All right, you got that piece out. So you're going to work right here to get that next little part out. And you're starting to see the shape of the spoon come out. Now, the other part you are cutting against the grain. Now, as you cut the handle, you're going to cut with the grain. So it's going to be a little bit easier to get through. Okay, you're going to just pop that part off. Okay, so you just got to get that other side off. And then we can start sanding. Again, take your time. Be careful. Okay, there's your rough spoon right there. So now you're going to just take little bits of it off at a time. Now again, a really sharp blade, you'll be able to get little bits. You don't want to cut too much at a time because in miniature, if you cut too much, you'll really be able to see it and notice it in the end. So take your time. After you get all those little bits off, just look at it, see if it looks straight. Okay. And it doesn't look bad, but we're going to trim it up some more. We're going to just take some just very, very thin, thin bits off the handle. Very carefully. You just work that handle, just trimming off a little bit at a time. A little bit at a time. Watch your fingers. Watch your fingers. But just turn it from side to side and look. If you see something that's a little off, trim it. And the knife should be able to get those little bits off to even it up. Just little bit by little bit. Take your time. Take your time. Now, after you've kind of like gotten around the edges like that and kind of shaped it up pretty good, you're going to start, need to start to work, um, Make sure you put your close your blade before you lay your blade down. But now we're going to start sanding. Sand that handle. Shape it and round it off. And you're going to kind of bevel the sides of the spoon. So that you'll kind of get like a, a little ridge. And see, so you see the shape of it kind of coming together. It's looking smoother. Okay, now the handle's still a little thick. So you still want to... Work that down a little bit just to trim it down a little bit to get some of that thickness off of it because those are the kind of things, details that will give away a miniature uh, scene when some of the accessories just look out of scale. They look too thick, too bulky. So trim that down a little bit more and then it's actually going to be easier to round off with the sandpaper. 
Okay. So you see, we've got a sanding, shaping mess. You got all kinds of pieces of wood, but look how nice your spoon is looking there. So now you're going to want to scoop out a little bit in the middle to give the little spoon section a little dip in it. And just look at it, just see how it looks to you. And then sand a little bit, kind of in a circular motion. And just sand it a little bit more. And your eye will be able to tell you what looks good. And work on it until you're satisfied with it. Now, I really like the way that looks. It looks nice and delicate. Very neat, very smooth. I'm very pleased with the way that turned out. Very, very pleased. Just kind of sanding some more in that little circle okay so let's check it out with something in the kitchen now that's with one of the cast iron skillets I really like the way that looks I really like the way that looks so I think I want to add a little stain to it it just looks too bright so I'm just going to add a little watered down um, acrylic paint to it just to kind of make it look like it's been used a little bit. Now some of my other spoons, I've got them a lot darker. So you want variation. I think that looks really, really cute. It looks very delicate. That will look very realistic in a miniature scene. A drawer, in a, in a jar, on the table, in a bowl. So let's compare it um, to some of the other pieces I made. I made a mess, so let me wipe the table off there. Yeah. My pot is dirty, but <laughs> at least we can see what the spoons look like. Yeah, I need to wash those dishes. But those are my some of my other spoons I had. But it looks like I need something else. Looks like I need something else. I think I want to make a spatula. Yeah, I think I want to make a spatula. Okay, so I'm going to make a spatula with polymer clay. Now, I'm going to use a coffee stir to make the handle. And the coffee stir in itself is, is a little bit wide. So what I'm going to do is um, split it. Now, that's a spatula. I made it another time. So um, this one should look better then. Okay, so I'm going to just split the coffee stir in half. Um, again, be careful with that blade. That's a surgical grade blade I have to be very careful so whatever blade you're using be very careful but I'm going to split it in half to make the handle for this okay and just be very careful and just split it in half okay and then I'm going to just kind of pare it down because even though I split it in half it seemed a little bit thick to me so what you're going to do, now that's just a, a basic tile, you know, got from home, um, one of the home stores. And I'm going to take a nice little blob of the polymer clay. Now, I have a tendency to use Fimo. Sculpey or work, any of the polymer clays will work, but I, I use Fimo. Okay, use the directions on whatever package you use. And what I do is almost make like a lollipop blob on the end of the coffee stirrer. And then I lay it on the tile. And that makes it easy to shape and to bake without touching it a lot. And distorting the shape because of the heat from my hands and fingers. So I'm going to lay it on there and just kind of trim out this shape that I want. Just a little bit. Just to kind of get the basic shape. Now I leave it a little bit thicker. Because to me it's easier to shave and sand it off after it has baked. Um, when it's soft, to me, it's kind of just a lot to try to shape it. So I just get my basic shape now um, while it's still um, soft. So I'm beveling down the edges. And, you know, just kind of get a basic shape. Again, be careful of your fingers. Yeah, just kind of beveling down those sides. And then I have to bake it. Uh, mine I have to bake for like 15 minutes. But you follow the instructions on on your um, package of whatever polymer clay that you're using. Okay. Just trimming that out a little bit. 
Okay, so yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, so now that I have my basic shape there, feeling pretty good about it. But I just want to kind of level it out a little bit. So I've got another towel and I'm just going to tamp it down a little bit just to smooth it out before I put it in the oven. Just tamping it down a little bit. And this is this is my method, you know. There's more than one way to do this. This is what I feel comfortable with, straighten that stick out. Because after it's baked in, it'll be in there. So it looks, you know, pretty smooth. But I'll be able to do more smoothing and sanding after it bakes. So let's do that. Okay, so we're back out of the oven. And it's cool, so the pan's not hot. Okay, so there's my basic shape there. And now that it's cooled and it's hard, I can go ahead and sand and shape it more without worrying about distorting uh, my original design. Okay, so I'm just going to begin to sand it and take some of the any, any lumpiness off the surface of it. Okay, just gently sand it. And then I'm going to begin to just trim off some of the, the roughness on the edges. Again, I say this all the time when we work with the blade. Be very, very careful. Be very, very careful. Just trim it a little bit at a time. Now, polymer clay is really great when, when you're after it's been baked. It's nice and firm, but you can still bevel it. You can stand it. You can carve it. It's just a really great medium to work with that's why it's just so wonderful to use it in making miniatures so just gently just gently shave it off and just like with the wood and the spoons just do little bits at a time don't try to gouge out a big chunk just do a little bit at a time just a little bit at a time now make sure you clean it up real neat around the handle just so it's smooth, get that really cleaned up and neat because you want that to just look really, really smooth. Because again, there's details like that that will give it away in your scene. So keep just turning it, looking at it, sand it where it needs it. If you need to taper it some more, do that. Because you can definitely get it as thin as you like to get the, the look you want. So don't be afraid of it. The polymer clay is strong enough um, just to take your refining and your refinishing. And this is going to look really look great with the collection of utensils in your kitchen, whether it, it be on a table or in a drawer or in a jar. It's going to really look good. So keep that in mind while you're working. Don't rush this. Take your time. Be very patient. Because the finer and more refined you make it look, the better it'll look in your setting. When I'm working on something really small and delicate like this, it always reminds me of the time that I cut my hand with an X-Acto knife. Uh, my dad used to use X-Acto knives to do my miniature um, make miniature furniture and things for me and he told me not to bother the knife and I did anyway so I was 10 I mean what did you want from me but I cut my hand really really bad really really deep so I have a very seat deep and serious respect for exacto blades any kind of craft blades so I always feel more comfortable when I'm sanding although I need to use my blades when I work with things that are really small like this, it always reminds me of that day I learned my lesson of how to respect a craft blade. Okay, so by now your um, spatula should be looking pretty good. Just do your finishing, um, refining on the handle, making sure it's smooth and kind of rounded at the tip. You don't want it to be sharp um, on the edges or on the end. Okay, so just make sure you just do your finishing there. Well, so now I do my really fine finishing touches with a nail buffer. It's really fine and it, it works really, really well. So, yeah, sometimes that's what I end with. But I'm really feeling good about the way this looks.
really feeling good about the way it looks. So let's get the other items out and compare it. See how everything looks together. Because to me, that's the true test. How does it look in the setting or among some other um, 12 scale utensils? Because that's going to give it away if it's not the right scale. I don't measure a lot, but I always compare it to some other items that I have that are in the same scale. I made all of these items, so, and I've used them or had them in the settings with my dolls, and they look really good. So these pieces, I think, would be a great addition to any uh, kitchen scene. I definitely love the variation. Um, where I did the, the light wood spoons and the darker ones. So you can stain them according to, you know, what you need for your setting. I sure have enjoyed uh, doing this today. I sure have really, really been enjoying producing these videos for you, especially today's tutorial. So if you've enjoyed it, let me know in the comments. Like, share, and subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you'll be alerted when I'm uploading another video for the rooming house doll house and if you haven't already seen the playlist of the previous videos for the rooming house doll house definitely check that out so you'll be up to date on what's going on and what has already occurred with the progress of the rooming house doll house okay i sure have enjoyed you all today definitely come back because there's lots more to come thanks so much for watching dolls Bye-bye.